A listener to Everything Compliant requested we cut out the rants and shout outs and post those separately. So, gentlemen, we are now at uh, rants and shout outs, our fan favorite. So, I hope everyone's got a good one today. We're going to start back across the pond with uh, hopefully a little bit longer one that we're all anticipating, Jonathan Armstrong. Well, thanks, Tom. Uh, I wanted to, uh, it's the funeral of uh, Prince Philip tomorrow, and I wanted to give a, a, a tribute to him, I think, in terms of a life well lived, really. And I think some people have seen Prince Philip in later life, but uh, have forgotten his earlier life and the sacrifices he made then. He was exiled from Greece aged just 18 months in a cot made out of a fruit box. And when the war started in uh, 1939, he joined the Navy aged 18. Um, This was a Navy, the Merchant Navy and the Royal Navy combined, suffered 81,000 deaths, 81,000 sailors died. And of course, the numbers were equally horrendous on uh, in, in in terms of the US's commitment and Japan and Germany and the other nations involved. He served illustriously during the war in the Mediterranean and in the Pacific, and he kept in the Navy after the war, including in roles training the next generation of sailors uh, for the Cold War. And he left the Navy only in 1952 when he uh, when, when the Queen ac- acceded to the throne, he left at the rank of commander. He was patron, president, or a senior member of 780 organizations during his lifetime. Uh, he made uh, two. Uh, he made 22,000 official solo visits, in addition to those that he made with the Queen. And uh, even more than Tom Fox, he made five and a half thousand speeches uh, in that uh, in that time. He uh, what one that's a little more personal to me. He was the chair of the Duke of Edinburgh Award, which tries to take um, kids at school and make them experience various challenges. And there's been some very moving stories about less able children who were uh, who, whose life was changed by that Duke of Edinburgh award uh, Paralympic athletes for example who wouldn't leave the house until they were pushed by their school or people close to them to do that award and just finally there's a very touching story that uh, that we've had over here about um, Prince Philip's visit to the White House in 1979. Now, of course, uh, he was a prince, not an angel, and he uh, said things that were unfortunate from time to time. But uh, one person who who sort of leapt to his defence was Linwood Restray, one of the butlers at the White House, who was, uh, or still is, an uh, African American uh, a, a butler, uh, a retired butler now, who had obviously not been treated well by some visitors to the White House. But he remembers an episode of Prince Philip uh, stood in a room looking at the art collection alone, and the two butlers came and offered him a drink. And he said he'd have a drink on condition that he could serve the butlers and not vice versa because they'd had a hard, long day with the uh, royal party being in the White House. So um, rest in peace, Prince Philip, a life full of adventure and a life well lived. Uh, I would say, Matt, you've got a tough act to follow, but I think we all actually, we all do well said and well done, Mr. Armstrong. Matt Kelly. Uh, Yeah, I I cannot... uh, fill that kind of uh, shoes. I have a very different uh, rant, I suppose, a pretty weird one. Uh, I am here to talk about Hometown International. I don't know if anybody has heard of this yet, but that is the sandwich shop in Paulsboro, New Jersey. 
that is owned by a publicly traded penny stock. Uh, so this is a publicly traded sandwich shop in Paulsboro, New Jersey, that uh, in recent weeks, the wackadoos online on Reddit or whatnot have bid up the market value of this sandwich shop publicly traded business to $100 million. Now, this the, the, the sole asset, the sole property is the sandwich shop, uh, which made $14,000 last year. Uh, and it is located right next to the high school of Paulsboro, New Jersey. The owner of the shop, uh, whose name is actually Paul, I won't give his full name here, partly because I don't remember it, but uh, he is a renowned wrestler and he is a part-time coach for the wrestling team at the high school. And I was looking through the 10K that the hometown had filed this week and they included the detail that in the rear of the sandwich shop, they have space dedicated for wrestling practice and other physical sports. So this is a hundred million dollar market cap business. That is a sandwich shop that made 14 grand that runs a fight club in the back. And by the way, they put in the 10 K that they have wrestling and fight clubs in the back. Am I the only one who knows that the first rule of fight club is you don't talk about <laughs> fight club. And here it is in the 10 K. Um, so I like uh, more power to them. I, I, like I said, I'm not quite sure that this is a rant, but I think it does point to a certain level of uh, total nonsense and hysteria in the penny markets, uh, penny stock capital markets these days. And uh, I, you, I don't know what to say. A hundred million dollars for a sandwich shop, which, by the way, I pulled up their balance sheet. It lasts no intangible assets. So clearly they have no secret sauce because that's what it would be. So I don't know what the appeal of the sandwiches are. I hope that they are going to do better business in 2021. And uh, I don't know, that's all I got. Jonathan Marks. Matt, I'll tell you, they have great chicken salad there. Do they? I wondered yeah. as a New Jersey representative, if you had known of these places. Yeah, yeah it's like $1,000 a pound. It's fantastic. Yeah. So I, my rant, my shout out, I don't know whether you want to pick either side of this, but it's Bernie Madoff. And uh, for those of you that uh, know or don't know, he passed away this week in prison. And um, my my, I'll rant all day long and I will go to my grave with this. But I, I firmly still believe that Ruth Madoff was the mastermind behind all of this. And I've said this, you know, probably a thousand times. And every time I talk about Madoff, if you really dissect what happened here and you really look at Bernie and you look at how he acted and interacted and how this whole thing came to be. I think it was Ruth and her father that really set Bernie up in business. And I think it was Ruth that really introduced Bernie to all the friends and family, which we now know to be, you know, sort of that phraseology in the Ponzi scene in, in the Ponzi scheme world. But uh, I really do think it, it's uh, I really do think it was Ruth who, who was the maestro behind all of this. And um, I, I know it sounds kind of quirky, but that's that's kind of what I believe. And then, you know, on the, you know, on the shout out side, you know, thanks, Bernie, for it lighting a fire underneath me and uh, allowing me to be a little bit creative and and putting forth the fraud Pentagon and airing that adding that competence and arrogance piece to the three other elements that uh, Cressy laid out, which were pressure, opportunity and rationalization. So, you know, that's my rant and that's my shout out for the week. Rest in peace. Hey, Rosen, you are hitting cleanup today and you have some very big shoes to fill. I don't know. I'm, I, I got the fungo bat and I, I think I need like a big slugger here. Uh, it is baseball season again here in America. Jonathan Armstrong, as you've no, nothing like cricket, but we use a bat and this is very weak sauce. But uh, the Red Sox started off in true fashion and lost their first three games. And I said, OK, well, I don't need to take the MLB package. And I think, you know, we're going to get what we deserve. Oh, and three team. And then they reverse course and go nine and three. And I sign up for the MLP ticket and then they lose. So uh, until we uh, match up against the Yankees, there's really not much know, to know about the Red Sox. But uh, I guess I'm still going to struggle along in my uh, 50 plus year of being a fan. So uh, I'm out on the Sox. Uh, I am going to shout out to Frank Jacobs. You don't know who Frank Jacobs is or was rather. You probably didn't grow up in the 60s. Frank Jacobs was a mainstay of Mad Magazine. 
uh, in my uh, humble opinion, one of the greatest publications ever, which may tell you a lot about me. But he was uh, focused on musicals and lyrics and would parody uh, both theater work and movie work. And one of my favorites was his turning, he and Mort Drucker turned West Side Story into East Side Story. And I won't sing these lyrics, but they go to When You're a Jet. And it's sung by Nikita Khrushchev in the Mad Magazine parody. When you're a red, you're a red all the way from your first party purge to your last power play. When you're a red, you've got agents galore. You give prizes for peace while stirring up war. So uh, Mad Magazine, uh, Frank Jacobs, a big part of my life growing up. And to the extent I uh, still ask what me worry, that's the reason. Uh, so, gents, that concludes uh, this episode of Everything Compliance. I look forward to getting together again in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Thanks a Thanks. lot, Tom. Take care, everybody. See you. Stay well. For the rest of the commentary to this week's Everything Compliance, check out the audio podcast, which will post Thursday, April 22nd.